Welcome everyone. Let's talk about urban planning. Uh, and in the Netherlands, which is facing some shrinking regions, so the loss of populations in some regions, the Netherlands launched a national plan in 2009 to address this situation. And I have invited Marco Bontier to talk about this plan that actually ended in 2022. And to tell us more about uh, why it stopped, what new approaches are emerging to fight the process uh, of urban shrinking in the country. So we'll jump into it right away. Mark, welcome to our episode. Thank you. So, uh, Marco, shrinkage, uh, shrinkage is well, it's a growing global phenomenon. Policymakers are struggling to accept it, to implement new approaches, and your study focus on the Netherlands, okay? apparently one of the few cases in which uh, there was a clear strategy to fight the problem. So tell us more, uh, tell us more about that and what drove this research. Um, so um, what is special about um, well, the case study that I studied in the Netherlands is that uh, not just that there's, there's a strategy to uh, try to deal with this phenomenon of shrinkage, uh, but that it was a national strategy in which uh, the national government uh, tried to collaborate with uh, provincial, regional governments and local governments to uh, um, develop an effective strategy uh, to deal with, uh, with shrinkage. So there's several other European countries where um, strategies to deal with shrinkage have been developed, but uh, not so many that uh, developed that at the national level. And um, the main reason why I uh, got interested in uh, this specific focus uh, was actually that uh, what you already announced at the start of um, this conversation, that this, uh, meanwhile, this uh, strategy has ended. Uh, and I, uh, I asked myself, why has it ended? And, uh, and that's where my uh, uh, exploration of this uh, uh, topic started. Perfect. Let's follow up on that. So what are the main findings of this study? Um, so I have uh, tried to trace uh, the emergence uh, and development and, uh, and the end of uh, the strategy through time. And I was helped by that because already since more or less the start of that strategy, uh, some years before that, I'm already involved in uh, research in urban and regional shrinkage in the Netherlands and other European uh, cities and countries. Um, so I was actually there as a researcher when uh, when they started this strategy. I was also there when it ended. Um, so um, um, I knew which... Uh, which documents um, I had to study, uh, and it was also relatively easy to find out uh, which people would be the most uh, interesting uh, information sources for my interviews. Um, so um, I tried to reconstruct uh, with, with the interviews and the analysis of policy documents uh, how this uh, uh, strategy came about and why it came about. Um, and uh, I mainly found that um, uh, it started actually the uh, growing awareness uh, of, of shrinkage as a structural problem, uh, not only at that moment, but also for the next decades. Uh, it started at the local and regional level. Uh, so the first people that uh, tried to make uh, national um, um, policymakers aware of the problem uh, did that from the local and the regional level of uh, shrinking cities and regions. Uh, but then also some uh, national institutions became involved, uh, like uh, national uh, policy advice institutions, for example. Uh, and then the ball started rolling, uh, more or less. Uh, but then the, the big difference that actually led to uh, the strategy was made by, uh, uh, by a minister that in 2009 became the Minister of uh, uh, Interior Affairs in the Netherlands. Um, and... Um, he uh, made it kind of his, his personal mission to uh, uh, pay more attention to shrinkage also at the national level and to develop a strategy uh, based on a kind of uh, solidarity principle between growing and shrinking parts of the country. Uh, and he managed to get the coalition together for that. Uh, and then uh, this first action plan came, uh, followed up by a second action plan about five or six years later. Um, and then um, gradually um, this, uh, this policy and the, the sense of urgency uh, for it uh, faded away uh, actually at, at all uh, the uh, levels of governance. This was actually one of the things I didn't expect to find that uh, not only at the national level, uh, the interest faded away, but actually also at the level of the areas to, that were actually shrinking. And then towards the end of the article, I, I tried to um, um, 
answer the question why that happened. Um, so partly it was uh, because uh, swingage was no longer seen as a very urgent issue. Uh, for example, because uh, uh, the population forecast had changed that uh, there would be less swingage and in some parts uh, of the country, maybe even uh, more growth uh, than expected some years before that. And partly it was also uh, more for pragmatic reasons, uh, like for example, uh, uh, the crisis that, that came in between, not only in the Netherlands, but also internationally, uh, which forced the government to, uh, to make serious uh, cutbacks on their spendings. Uh, and then uh, this was one of the programs that, uh, that suffered from that, uh, amongst others, because uh, much less people uh, at the national government level um, could work on this specific program uh, than at the start. Okay, perfect. So um, these uh, program changes at the government level, this growing awareness, uh, the solidarity between the shrinking parts of the country, the growing parts of the country. Let's look at, like in practice, now probably ahead of the future now, uh, how can this, this set of policies, these findings can help set more strategies for the future? So in practice, what can happen? Um, what can happen is uh, actually partly uh, it has already started happening and not because of this article, but uh, my article oh. links uh, quite nicely uh, to the ongoing debate in the Netherlands because uh, already since last year, there's a lot of debate about uh, what the future uh, of regional policies more in general for the Netherlands should be, not specifically about uh, growing and shrinking areas, but rather a regional policy that uh, um, is one regional policy for all regions in the Netherlands and their uh, interconnections. Um, so um, this is at this moment still an ongoing discussion and we don't know yet uh, which uh, concrete policies will get out of that. Uh, we are currently in a quite interesting uh, political situation in the Netherlands. Um, uh, at the moment that this um, conversation is recorded uh, at the very day of this conversation, uh, our new national government is installed. Uh, and um, probably they will have uh, quite different uh, policies and strategies uh, in, in several fields of policy than the governments before. Um, and one of the things uh, maybe they would prioritize more than the governments before is uh, to pay more attention to the, the regions lagging behind in their development relatively in, in the Netherlands. So uh, I would expect that they are very interested in uh, um, prioritizing uh, regional policies in which all regions of the Netherlands uh, get a more or less uh, equal role uh, and equal attention. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, um, uh, they also have to make a lot of uh, cutbacks on their spendings again, which could also go at the expense of the ambitions in these uh, regions. Uh, so what, what we will actually see in the coming years is still quite open, but somewhere in the next months, uh, it should become more concrete. Mm -hmm. And maybe the findings of this uh, article could also uh, be relevant for that. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up on this uh, new national uh, government in a bit, but before, so there is still a lot of uncertainty for the future. How do you think that future research can help? So what should it focus on to help on this? Um, so, um, of course, in my... Um, uh, article, I could only focus on um, uh, one case, the Netherlands. Um, uh, it wasn't possible to make an international comparison. It could be interesting to look at uh, other countries, uh, especially other countries in Europe that are facing more or less sim similar problems. But uh, in most cases, in most other countries, uh, the contrast between growing and shrinking parts of the country are uh, actually much more extreme. Uh, so maybe an international comparison in which we uh, um, maybe would find some other countries that are trying to do something comparable to the Netherlands uh, could be helpful. Um, on the other hand, um, a limitation that I faced uh, was uh, I had to do this research uh, all by myself in a limited amount of time. Um, so if uh, maybe uh, there would either be more uh, people or I would have more time, uh, maybe we could also go a bit more in-depth to uh, really find uh, more in-depth the reasons of um, why happened what, what happened, because uh, I still have the impression that, um, well, I, I did find some relevant findings, but uh, it feels for me like only the start of a research that could have been much more in-depth. So maybe 
um, either I in the coming years or maybe also some other researchers could uh, think of a follow-up research in which you uh, um, could follow up on, on these findings and see them as more an in-between step rather than uh, the final conclusion. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You mentioned, uh, stepping a bit in the conversation, you mentioned the political situation with the new national government uh, installed in the country. Uh, and you went to a point that I would like to ask you and use my privilege as a moderator. Uh, if you think uh, that the rise of these new parties, the PVV, for example, if uh, these new parties can impact somehow the implementation of new strategies, uh, if, it fall, if it's going to be a priority or not for the future. So how can party politics uh, interfere with this? And then after that, I would like for you to share uh, your, you know, your personal reflections, what struck you the most personally when you conducted your research. Um, so um, when the Netherlands for, uh, not just for me, but I think for all of us, the big question mark is now um, uh, to what extent uh, the new coalition with uh, indeed the, the PVV as the, as the biggest party, which uh, never happened before. Uh, but then also uh, another uh, populist party like uh, uh, the BBB, uh, the um, Farmers Civilians Movement officially, but actually mostly the Farmers Party uh, in my uh, perception. Uh, they made a lot of promises uh, in their election programs and now also in the, the rough outline of what has to become the, the coalition program uh, of all the things they want to change. Um, uh, so they made a lot of promises which uh, drew a lot of votes. Uh, and apparently I also saw in the news uh, this raised uh, the trust in national government uh, under uh, um, especially on the certain groups that so far had the least trust in government, uh, especially the, uh, the lower income groups uh, that really think uh, that now that we have voted for these parties, uh, they uh, understand us much better um, than the parties that were in the coalition before. And now finally, we will see a policy that is uh, in our interest uh, much more than, than before. Uh, so the big question mark is whether they can actually um, realize um, um, uh, a government program uh, that actually um, is more in the interest of these groups that so far felt a bit left behind. Um, personally, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, they will disappoint these people um, a lot and that a lot of the drinks that uh, they want um, um, probably are simply impossible to, uh, to realize. Uh, so linked to that, there's also a big question to, uh, uh, about uh, how stable this coalition will be because uh, next to these two more populist parties, uh, there's also two parties that actually are more, let's say, mainstream uh, connected to the, um, the coalitions that we had before and the kind of policies we had before in the Netherlands. Uh, so the balance between those two uh, already in the negotiations was, uh, there were a lot of problems with that, a lot of tensions. Um, so it remains to be seen that, um, how long this coalition will, uh, will actually last. Yes. And, uh, so if you had to, uh, in, this was very straight to the point episode, but if you had to, in two sentences to summarize the whole conversation for people to remember, what would it be these two sentences? Um, so I hope, um, that this, um, this concept of, uh, that we didn't discuss in the conversation before, but is discussed in the article quite centrally, uh, multi-scalar governance. Um, so somewhere in the article, I, uh, I give the message that uh, Swingits is a multi-scalar problem uh, or phenomenon, and uh, it requires multi-scalar governance. So I hope that's a message that people uh, take from the article and maybe then now also from uh, this conversation. Um, and maybe uh, then in future research, we can think about what, what that actually means for how to make an effective strategy to deal with a situation like shrinkage on the regional level, but also with uh, these, um, in many countries, growing um, differences between uh, growing, flourishing, uh, wealthy, uh, and uh, shrinking, stagnating, lagging behind parts of the country. Perfect. Mark, thank you very much. You're welcome. So for those who are watching us on YouTube, in the description of this video, you can find all the resources, all the materials, the article uh, that Marco uh, published in our journal. And also in the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website, you have all the resources to follow up on this. And you can also listen to this episode 
uh, wherever you get your podcast. We are also on Twitter and have a newsletter for you to um, follow up on new episodes. <laughs>